All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in with me today. It is a pleasure. Uh, thank you all for taking some time today to talk with me. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, so we are obviously doing a lecture today, just, uh, just talking about the general overall products available here in Louisiana in the medical marijuana program. And for those of you that may not know me, I am Dr. Victor Chow. I'm the founder and medical director of the Medical Marijuana Clinic in Louisiana. If any of you uh, find this information useful, would like to do a consultation with me, please go to our official website, which is chowmd.com and um, uh, you know, review the uh, consultation request information there. Uh, I appreciate it. Again, just a quick few reminders uh, for those that are participating live on Zoom. You do not have to start your video. You do not have to use your real name. Uh, you know, and um, you know, so so, and please also remember this is being recorded for uh, further distribution on YouTube for other uh, patients to watch. Um, thank you, guys. All right. Well, let's get started. So please keep in mind a couple general things. You know, this presentation is intended as general medical advice. It's not personalized medical advice for you. You know, please follow up with your specific doctor or pharmacist for individual advice to your specific situation. And also keep in mind that we are recording this early June, 2023. So products are constantly being updated, revised, you know, so this information, you know, may be out of date by the time you watch it as far as, you know, specific, you know, but again, one of the things I try not to do is talk about specific products. So hopefully 99% of this general information will still apply in most instances. So the three main things we're going to talk about today are the routes of administration, the specific product types, again, not individual, individual products, but general categories and then take some questions at the end if we have time. So the single most important thing that a patient taking medical marijuana needs to factor in is their route of administration. How are you going to take the medical marijuana? That's the single most important thing. Are you gonna inhale it? Are you gonna take it by mouth or topically on your skin? And for those that are wondering, the second most important thing is the dosage behind the route of administration. But today we're gonna to focus on um, those products and most of those we'll talk about the route of administration. For those of you uh, that did not see a previous lecture that I had, we were talking about strain selection. That is available on my YouTube channel for those of you that may wanna go back and watch that. All right, so let's talk about inhalational first. That's, you know, generally what most people think of or know of, you know, from previous history or just knowing people that use marijuana. So the pros of inhalation is it's generally going to be your quickest acting option. If you have a sudden flare up with any of your symptoms, anxiety, pain, it flares up, you need something quick acting, inhalational is the best option. But there are some significant cons to inhalational use. Uh, there are some significant health risks, right? You're breathing this into your lungs. And anybody that tells you that there's no health risk with smoking marijuana, they're selling you a load of BS. There are significant health risks, um, emphysema, bronchitis. Possibly we're seeing maybe an increased risk of lung cancer too. And that just makes sense, right? You're breathing something into your lungs that wasn't really meant to be there, okay? The also, the another con of inhalational is it's a short duration of action. It's going to work quick, but it's also going to get out of your system quick. So if you're one of these patients that needs something sort of 24-7, if you only use an inhalational route, you might end up smoking marijuana all day long. And most people don't want to do that. So what are the forms that inhalational comes in? Well, it comes in of uh, flower, which is the plant form. Again, what most of us would traditionally think of or remember from our youth. Uh, flower does come either just sort of as the bulk product, just the flower itself. 
the pharmacies usually also sell some pre-rolls and with the pre-rolls that are rolled up for you, there's usually a little filter to make it a little less aggravating, so to speak. Um, and then there are cartridges and think of these, honestly, these are, these are like vapes. And there's really three different kinds of cartridges on the market today. And we'll talk about them in general uh, today as well. All right, so let's talk about the flour. Okay, so bulk flour, basically, you'll just get a little package and it just has the plant or the flour form in it. So the pros of flour is that you can select different strains. You can select sativa, indica, hybrid. You can select different THC levels. You know, do you want something that has 10%, 15, 20, 25? Again, in general. Now, for those of you that want to learn more about strains, again, I do have a lecture on that on my YouTube channel. Flour in general is going to be your most cost-effective option, right? It's because it requires less work on the pharmacy, on the growers. Um, obviously, if you buy the pre-rolls, there's someone that's rolling it up for you. So you do lose some of that cost-effectiveness. And there's multiple ways that you can use flour. Uh, in, if you just want to inhale it, you can roll it in paper. You can use a dryer vaporizer. You can use uh, a water filtration method. Now, most people call it like a bomb. But, you know, there's multiple ways to use it. And that's just inhaling it. A lot of people like to cook with flour, you know, that type of thing. So flour has versatility. It's cost effective. Again, as we discussed earlier, though, with flour, especially if you're planning to smoke it, there's a lot of health risks with that. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to downplay that or, you know, whatever. You know, and some people say to me, Dr. Chow, you're, you're constantly over you know, selling the, the health risk and, you know, whatever. No, I think there are significant health risks. And even in my professional experience with the flower being available a year and a half ago, I'm starting to see more and more of my patients that converted flower a year and a half ago, starting to tell me, oh, I'm having some breathing issues, some, you know, some uh, bronchitis, you know, getting frequent sinus infections, you know. So, you know, that's just some anecdotal and we are seeing some real, um, studies that are showing there are inhalational risks. Flour, as with any sort of product that you need to work with, there's a learning curve, right? Just like if you have no idea how to cook, I just give you a stalk of broccoli, you know, what are you going to do with it, right? So you, you have to sort of have a learning curve with flour. Now, the, nowadays, there's a lot of YouTube videos, educational materials. Most people can pick it up pretty easily. There's usually a significant odor. Most of the time, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. And so I know for a lot of people, that's a real significant downside. And probably one of the biggest cons with flour, at least the flour we're seeing in Louisiana, there's no significant CBD content. And I know a lot of people want products that have some CBD in it. In Louisiana, unfortunately, we don't tend to see a lot of products with a significant CBD content um, you know, in the flour, at least right now. So there's three main ecosystems in terms of the vapes or the metered cartridges. Good Day Farms, Elira, and then various different disposables that I've seen from time to time. So cartridges, in general, we're talking about all, across all brands and makes and models. Generally, you have access to a vi wide variety of strains, again, sativas, indicas. Um, sometimes people have this impression that there's no health risk from cartridges or cartridges are less health risk, there's still significant health risks. I mean, let's just be honest, you know, you're inhaling something that your lungs weren't really meant to be inhaled. Now, cartridges are generally more user friendly than flour. So again, I akin it to, you know, if you give it a stalk of broccoli versus broccoli that's already been steamed and cooked and, you know, put in front of you, right? You know, so cartridges usually are more user-friendly than flour. Cartridges obviously cost more than flour on a per milligram basis. And just, again, there's more processing and work that the, um, that the manufacturer has to do. So the Good Day Farms Blink Puff Stick, this is sort of the OG, the, the initial first generation, the very first inhalable we saw in Louisiana. So the device is a generic 510 battery, and I won't go through the terminology you know, that much, but what that means is you don't have to use the device that comes with the cartridge. You can substitute a different device as long as it's sort of the same type of generic 510 battery. 
Uh, the Good Day Farm system also, uh, you can self-refill some of the cartridges that will reduce cost. I think the only downside that I really see is if you use at least the generic device that comes with the cartridge, it's more manual in usage. You know, it, it's, um, it's just pretty bare bones. Let's just be truthful with you. Now the Elira Pax Era Pro, now this is a proprietary device. So the device and the cartridge must both be in the Pax ecosystem. You're not gonna be able to use some other third party device generally, You're not gonna be able to use some other third party cartridge generally. Again, I don't know all the rules and regulations, but that's in general. Um, now, the nice thing about this device, I will have to say, it's a little bit like the iPhone. On the one hand, it's really technologically sophisticated, um, at least until recently. And um, I don't know, again, I don't follow up on this a lot, but at least until recently, you could download an app for your phone. You can control the dosage, the lockout settings. You could you know, control the temperature. You could do a lot of things with it. But on the other hand, if you just wanted to just take a puff right out of the box, you could also do that as well. So again, just like an iPhone, really sophisticated if you want to get into it, but also super user friendly. Um, that's a good device, in my opinion, for a lot of beginners. And also probably the biggest thing right now is currently the only inhalational product in Louisiana that has any significant CBD in it is a PAX product. It's the Freedom cartridge. So if you're a patient that's looking for something with nick significant CBD, the freedom is right for you, okay? All right, um, perfect. And unfortunately right now I have heard that the freedom is a little bit um, uh, out of stock right now, unfortunately, but I don't think that's gonna be a forever thing. All right, so let's talk about disposables. Now, there's some downsides with disposables. I've seen a lot of disposables where they don't tell you the strain. You're sort of rolling the dice that it's a strain that you may or may not benefit from. Now, as I said in my previous lecture, remember, route of administration is the most important thing. Dosage is the second most important thing. A third strain is the third most important thing. A lot of people don't really even notice that big of a difference with strains. But if you know you do, then maybe a disposable isn't right for you because you have no idea what strain you're getting, okay? Uh, disposals generally cost more than the permanent product um, if you're gonna be using it for a lot, right? Think about it. Like if you just buy a disposable cell phone, eventually that's gonna cost you more than just getting a good high quality phone you know, that's a permanent phone. And I do see some reliability issues, again, because they're meant to be disposable. They're not meant to be used for two years, right? So, you know, if you're buying a disposable and you think you're going to use it for two years, uh, probably the battery will drain out. It may not be rechargeable. You might get, you won't get two years worth out of it, in my opinion. But consider disposable if you're looking to start with inhalables, you're looking for a low cost way to enter it, or you're in a situation where your device may get lost or dirty, you're going to the beach, it might get wet, it might get sand in it, you know, you're, you're going, you know, fishing, and you might lose it in the water. So that, that might be a good reason to use a disposable. All right, so let's talk about orals now. So orals, you know, solids like chocolate gummies, you have your liquids, tinctures, and sort of your in-betweens, I guess, your distillate, your honey, um, you know, stuff like that. In general, orals are going to have a longer lasting effect. They will take longer to start working. So they're not usually a great option if you need acute right away benefits, okay? Most of the time an oral is gonna take 30 to 60 minutes to have an effect, but in general, it will have a longer lasting effect, maybe six to eight hours. So if you're looking for an all night effect, maybe an all morning, all afternoon effect, an oral would be a good option. The main benefit with orals in my opinion is that combination products with THC and CBD are available. And that is one of the really, really nice things we've been seeing in the last six months is all these combination products that have 50% THC, 50% CBD, or three parts THC, one part CBD, or vice versa, or 10 to one. And that's really, really good. So, you know, that is one of the biggest things I'm seeing right now with orals, which I think is great. Um, 
as we mentioned, orals do have take a longer time to take effect. I won't get into this in detail. Again, I don't want to get into the weeds with too many of these topics, but because of the way orals are processed by your liver and typically more with like the solid products, the chocolates, the gummies, some people may have unintended side effects, really just a really, really intense high, a very uncomfortable high. And that's just way, the way the oral products are metabolized by your liver. I would say 10% of patients have this issue. You just got to pay attention to it. Maybe avoid oral products, at least gummies or solids, if that happens to you. Maybe, you know, um, you know think about that. Again, one of the main problems we have with orals is that a lot of times there's no strain identification on there. So you don't know if you're getting a hybrid, sativa, indica. In general, I tend to find that if there's no strain identification on there, most of the time they're using a hybrid, but that's not guaranteed. In general, the timing between most oral products will be fairly similar. Like you're, most people aren't gonna see a super big difference between a liquid versus a solid, but in general, the more solid the product, the longer it will take to have an effect, the longer the effect will last. So let's say a liquid might start working after 30 minutes, a solid might be more like 60 minutes, a liquid might work for six hours, a solid might work for eight hours, you know, that type of minor thing for most people. It's not going to be a deal breaker one way or the other. All right. Um, so let's talk about tinctures. Um, so tinctures, the nice thing about them because they're liquid, they come with a dropper. They're easy to dose in small amounts. You can take one drop, two drop, three drops, four drops, five drops, 10 drops, 20 drops. The only problem that I tend, or I won't say the only, the biggest problem that I tend to see with most people with tinctures, they just don't like the taste or the texture. Remember the tinctures are basically the marijuana dissolved in some type of oil, olive oil, avocado oil, something like that. And some people just don't like the texture of a teaspoon of oil or a cc of oil or however much oil just sitting in their mouth. And obviously it's not easy to transport because for most people you're gonna transport a tincture, you're transporting the whole bottle all at one time. So gummies, you know, on the flip side, those are easy to transport, right? You know, you can just, you know, if you're going on a day trip, you know, you can just bring one gummy with you, right? And you can also cut gummies, I would say precisely as difficult, but most of the time people tell me they can cut gummies pretty reasonably into quarters. You know, so if you have a 20 milligram gummy, you can cut it into quarter, that's five milligrams. If you have a 10 milligram gummy, you can cut it into quarters and that's 2.5. So, you know, that's reasonable. All right, so let's talk about concentrates, distillates. And right now the concentrates and the distillates are being sold in a device called a dablicator. Um, again, not to get too much in the weeds, some of you that have been patients with me for a long time remember these distillates from about one to two years ago, just used to come in like a syringe. So the dablicator makes it where it's easier to dose, uh, less messy. You can dose one drop at a time, and the nice thing about the dablicator is there's a wide variety. You can use the product. You can take them orally, just put a drop in your mouth. You can mix it uh, with some type of food or drink. Some people tell me they'll mix it with their creamer, then put the creamer in their coffee, or they'll just mix it in some butter, butter some toast with it. Yeah, you can do that with the dablicator. Uh, some people also inhale the dablicators. Um, again, we talked about inhalational before. It's, it's, there's some health risks with it. I also don't feel dablicators, uh, the distillates are necessarily the best product for inhalational. Yeah, if you're looking for inhalational, some of the other products that I talked with you about, you're gonna be able to, I think, dose better. And one of the most important precautions is you need to use the da distillates with caution because these products are highly concentrated. Right now in Louisiana, they're probably the most concentrated products that we have. So you need to use them with caution especially taking them orally. Okay, and topicals. So just real quick on topicals. Some people love them, some people hate them. <laughs> topicals, the main pro and con of a topical, it's not absorbed into the body in a significant way. 
So that's a pro if somebody, you know, you work a day job, you don't want to feel affected. You know, that's a great option. But because it's not absorbed into the body like any of the other products we talked about, there is obviously a limited effect. And base practices that I have found with a topical is basically to take a small amount of it and apply it on a small superficial area of your body. So for example, knees, elbows, fingers, your feet, that tends to work well. What I've seen not work so well is when you take the tube and you slather a whole amount like on your lower back, you know, we don't tend to see good results that way. Or, you know, you slather a huge amount like on your entire leg, you know, that doesn't tend to work out that well. Okay, so we are at the end of the prepared lecture. Guys, thank you guys again for tuning in. I really, really appreciate everyone that's a patient, everyone that has tuned in today. I hope you found this useful. If any of you missed part of it, came in late, then uh, we will be reposting this to YouTube uh, probably in the next few days. And as a patient, you'll have exclusive uh, access to that for about a month or two uh, before we release it to the general public. Uh, we do have about five minutes for anybody that has any questions. If you would like uh, to, there's a chat function here on Zoom. Uh, go to the chat box. Please type in whatever questions, comments, concerns you might have. Uh, we can only answer general questions. Um, yeah, I can't get into anything specific to your specific situation. You'll have to wait until the consultation for that. But um, but if anyone has any general questions or comments or topics that you would like me to uh, you know address or comment on, I, I would be happy to do that. Just uh, please type any uh, questions here. And I'll wait a second in case uh, anyone needs to find that functionality on their system. Okay, I do not see any questions, so that will, I will take it to infer, ter, interpret that everyone got what they needed out of the lecture. And again, thank you guys so much. Thank you all for uh, tuning in today. And I will hopefully have a chance to see each and every one of you at your next uh, consultation. Thank you all so very much. Bye-bye.